So this is the video for book 10 of the Nicomachean Ethics, but I'm actually not really going to talk about book 10. I'm going to talk about book one, the first book that we read. And the lesson of this video is sort of going to be uh, to suggest before you read book 10 or in conjunction with book 10 or maybe after book 10, I want to encourage you to revisit uh, book one and what Aristotle said about happiness in book one. Uh, especially maybe go back and look at your perusal notes and the notes that you took while reading and things like that, and maybe the reading quiz. So if we look back at book one, book one was focused on happiness or eudaimonia or blessedness or flourishing. And we drew a lot of conclusions about happiness in book one. Here near the end of book one, uh, end of chapter 12, beginning of chapter 13, here we have him summing up something we've concluded about happiness. Uh, this is the thing we actually open the entire book with. Book one begins with this, but he sums it up also at the end of chapter 12. It is for the sake of this, for the sake of happiness, uh, whoa, there's a typo here. It is for the sake of this that we all, okay, we all do all the rest of our, sorry, the, the, the typo is screwing me up. So it's for the sake of happiness that we do all the rest of our actions, and uh, this is sort of why we do everything. We do everything in pursuit of eudaimonia, in pursuit of happiness. Uh, it's the first principle, it's the cause of goods we take to be uh, something honorable and divine. So basically, happiness is the reason we do everything. It's sort of the chief good. It's the thing that we're aiming at. It's why we do everything else. And another conclusion that we've drawn about happiness here in chapter one is that it's a kind of activity. So it's not a state of being. You can't sort of be happy at a moment. Rather, you kind of do happiness. Happiness is an activity. It's something you do. It's something you're engaged in. It's a process. It happens over time. It's an active thing. You can't sit there and be happy. You can only be happy when you're engaging in something. So happiness is a kind of activity of the soul. So it's not a sort of like physical activity, or if it's a physical activity, it's something sort of involving all of you, not just like your stomach digesting something, but rather involving your whole self. Remember, for Aristotle, the soul is the sort of thing that's animating your body, so it has to involve sort of everything about you. Uh, it's something that you're doing yourself, not some specific part of you is doing. So it's a kind of activity of the soul in accordance with complete virtue. And he says, okay, so happiness is a kind of activity of the soul in accordance with complete virtue. And so now let's figure out what virtue is. And then basically the rest of the book has been figuring out what virtue is. So just think back of what we've been reading. Most of it's been focused on what is virtue and what are the various virtues. But we got into this, and if you look back at the book one reading quiz, uh, you'll remember it noted this. We got into this investigation of virtue because virtue is part of happiness. So happiness is the activity of the soul in accordance with complete virtue. So the thought is that uh, sort of an act an activity in accordance with complete virtue is going to be happiness. So let's go figure out complete virtue. Once we know what virtue is, we'll know at least a big chunk of what happiness is. Happiness will be something in accordance with all of this virtue. So the happy person will be somebody who is uh, acting in accordance with all of these virtues. And now in book 10, we're going to return to the question of what is happiness, which we know is a kind of activity of the soul in accordance with complete virtue. But now we do it having understanding of com complete virtue. Now we know what complete virtue looks like. We've sort of covered all the virtues. So happiness is going to be some sort of activity of the soul in accordance with all these virtues. But then as the reading quiz for chapter 10, or for book 10 points out, Aristotle does something kind of interesting uh, partway through this book. Uh, he su suggests that happiness is basically uh, doing philosophy. Um, that turns out to be the kind of activity of the soul uh, that constitutes happiness. And that's 
puzzling to a lot of people. So to a lot of people, what it looked like we were setting up in book one, and what it looked like we were getting through the rest of the Nicomachean ethics was that, you know, complete virtue is a general sort of like, you're sort of good in a lot of ways. If you have complete virtue, you're kind and honest and generous and magnanimous and courageous and blah, blah, blah. So you're like a pretty impressive sort of person. And when you have all this going on, plus some other stuff which makes up happiness, that's what happiness is. And to some people, it seems like the distinction that gets introduced in chapters seven and eight of book 10, where suddenly philosophy is the chief end, the chief good, the uh, first, the first principle of happiness and the final goal of all our actions. To a lot of people, this seems like different. It's just suddenly Aristotle changes his mind. And so that's what we want to think about. I mean, we want to think about everything in book 10, but that's one thing to think about in book 10, which is number one, is Aristotle inconsistent? Is the stuff he says about how philosophy is the best in tension with what he says here and then the rest of the book following book one about complete virtue being part of happiness? Or is what he says consistent? Because lots of people think he is consistent. So there's this like divide. Some people think he's inconsistent. He's just offered two perspectives on happiness. One perspective, most of the book, where happiness is like this pretty broad thing, lots of different virtues. And one perspective right at the end, where he says, no, actually, philosophy is the best. Everybody should be a philosopher. Anybody who's not a philosopher isn't eudaimon, isn't happy, isn't flourishing. Uh, so is he inconsistent? Or uh, can we make sense of what he's saying throughout the whole book and put it all together into a unified whole? So that is the thing to keep your eye out as you read chapter 10. Um, or sorry, book 10, it's book 10. As you read book 10, uh, what do we think about the picture of happiness that he gives us here partway through the book? Um, how does it fit in with everything we've been reading? And especially because most of the book has just been virtue, how does it fit in to the main discussion of happiness we've seen already, which is, as I said before, book one.